Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Little movie thoughts. I'm gonna be spoiling the director's cut here, so yeah, kind of, you know, best if you have watched that one. It's the one I've watched the most times. I barely remember exactly how the theatrical cut goes. Actually, come to think of it, I guess I'm going to be spoiling both. I am going to be do, doing some comparing between the two. But, yeah, if you if you watch the director's cut and not the theatrical, you're not missing much. So, one pretty substantial change is the action does did he get some or not? Obviously, I prefer the director's cut, where he actually turns the girl down and says, you know what, I, you know what, I have to go help this person. I, you know, I vow to protect the defenseless, that's what I'm gonna go do. And not only because it strengthens the character of Daredevil, but also because it really sets up, honestly, I don't even remember how it is in the theatrical cut, if the I'm not the bad guy line doesn't even show up until he spares the life of Kingpin, but anyway, you know, it, it really sets that up because suddenly you have that, and, and that brings up that debate, you know, is vigilantism a good thing or a bad thing, you know, is it, is he better than the bad guys? He's also out there brutalizing people, you know, I mean, he's, he's not just like, arresting this guy, you know, he's not just performing a citizen's arrest of this, you know, random thug, he is kicking the crap out of him. You know, you, you can't blame that kid for being scared of Daredevil, you know, it, it, the suit doesn't exactly help, but just, yeah, and, and then it's like, yeah, but I'm not the bad guy, and, you know, he sadly stands in the rain outside, you know, at night, that's how we know it's sad, you know, rain, night, outside, very sad. And it's just, you know, I'm not the bad guy. This is, but, but no, I, I meant to help. This is wrong, you know, it, it just, it really brings that up. And that's interesting. You know, that's something that, it's it brought up in some comic books and I find it all the more interesting when it is, you know, because really most, comic book superheroes do not work for, like, the government, so it's not like, you know, well, if they do something wrong, this other, you know, and many of them do sometimes do something wrong, and, you know, are suddenly almost, heck, some of them barely even have much of a moral code, you know, some of them just, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so, that's one thing, and, I will admit that the thing with the kingpin, you know, it, it yeah, in the director's cut, the, 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 the cop says it, you know, the, the lying cop with the, what's it called, pacemaker, you know, kingpin doesn't just kill you, he kills your entire family. Why? Why, why does he do that? Okay, I get putting a hit on Electra. That actually makes sense, because she's kind of a badass, and she could kill you if, you know, I mean... Let's just say that Daredevil hadn't been implicated. You know, she would have, you know, looked, seen Bullseye, you know, and... I don't know if she could take him, she didn't in the movie, but, you know... Yeah, if she actually got to Kingpin, uh, yeah. That would have, you know, now the, but, but yeah, you know, why, why as just a, a rule? And, and when did he come up with it? Because he doesn't do that at the start of the film, 
he didn't kill Matt, you know, which, you know, he, he might not have even particularly had trouble with it. it's a 12-year-old kid. Then again, the bullies couldn't take him. I really am quite flabbergasted that they even tried, you know, I mean, one thing is making fun of him, but once they see that he, you know, he's blind, I mean, okay, at first they do walk away, but once he starts, you know, kicking their ass, well, I think, like, one of them just runs away, at least, but the, that main one, you know, he just kind of, yeah, okay, I'll fight you, and yeah. I do really like how in that fight, right after, you know, you get that smirk on the kid's face, and he just walks off with the, you know, walking stick, the, the white cane, I, is that what it's called? I don't know. It's been a lot of time since I talked about blind people in English. I do also gotta say, I really like that kid, just in general, you know, everything I've seen him in, he's been quite enjoyable and a pretty good actor. Well, enjoyable, I guess, you know. What's that David Spade movie? Then again, it's a, it's a David Spade movie. David Spade, why are you in such bad movies? You were hilarious and just shoot me. I'm getting off topic again. Yes, the, the you know, Scott Terrell, you know, he, he has a thing for appearing in movies with, like, you know, outlandish stuff happening. There's this, there's Eight-Legged Freaks, you know, and he apparently likes being in stuff where he loses his eyesight because the one episode of Charmed he's in, that's exactly what happens to him. It's not a spoiler, it happened pretty early on. Yeah, so, anyway. I quite like how they do the boxing scene early on. You know, I'm not talking about the, the montage, you know, intercut with Matt figuring out his powers and such. But just the, you know, that, that final fight, it's, it's very close and personal, as the action is in general, I'd say. It's, you know, it's, it's hard hitting, it's, it's unpleasant, and I think they spend the right amount of time on it, because it just does have that, you know, you feel like, excuse me, it really is, excuse me, like it really is something to overcome for you know, excuse me, Jack, the father, you know, that he, this is not just, you know, it's, it's not only the choice, it's also, this is really tough, you know, he, the other guy is a good fighter. I also quite like how they had Kane Hodder, he, he does absolutely nothing, he just sits there and looks intimidating, and if anything, Kane Hodder looks intimidating, you know, he's just sitting there next to Fallon. You know, I think that the framing's not bad either on the, you know, that you have both Fallon and Matt. Whenever you see Matt cheering his father on, you also see Fallon in the foreground and just out of focus, you know. So it's kind of that, you know, who, who do I choose between? Who do I let down? Who do I, you know, yeah, who's, whose lead do I follow? I really like some of the more brutal parts of the fights. Stuff like Electra with the hand impaled on her own side. You know, that just really and and that she herself gets impaled on her own side, you know, just and and Bullseye cutting her throat with the card. You know, and just just the line, you're good, baby. I'll give you that. But me a magic, you know, and gets the card and tosses it and slits her throat, just, you know. And just the way he doesn't just, he doesn't just kill her, he takes his time, you know, he is, he's a cat playing with the mouse he's found, you know, he is just such a sadist, and you just really hate him and want to see him pay bad, you know, it just, yeah. And I actually, I've heard some complaints about how Electra stabs Daredevil in the chest and he doesn't die even going on to fight, you know, Bullseye and Kingpin. I don't think she wanted him to die that fast. I think she wanted to make sure that he couldn't, you know, get away 
while she, you know, watched him die. Maybe she was gonna, like, stab him some more times, and over time he die. you know. I, you know, I mean, she stabs him, and then she takes off his mask. I think she just wanted him to not be able to struggle or not be able to get away while she, you know, took the mask, you know. She, she has a little bit of a sadistic streak as well. I mean, it is understandable. She thinks that the guy killed his, you know, killed her father, so. And that sort of makes sense, I guess, with, you know, at least it was Daredevil's weapon, but I can kind of see why some people might think, you know, how could she not tell that it wasn't him that, you know, just from, from the position that he was in when her father got hit, and yeah, I, I can kind of understand that. I really like the entire scene in the in the streets, you know, with the, the motorcycle and just killing the two drivers and, you know, the Daredevil running up the motorcycle and kicking Bullseye off it, you know, that, yeah. Also on the brutal stuff, when when the when bullseye throws, I, I don't even know what it is. It's some brass thing or something. It, it makes a loud noise when it hits. Right into Daredevil's throat. That has got to hurt. And yes, it is, it is indeed quite true that when Daredevil dodges, you know, bullseye kicks out like a bunch of glass and you know throws it at. When Daredevil dodges it. Overall, that is a ripoff of Spider-Man, and there's also one or two parts that are kind of obviously Matrix, you know. And I finally realized that when re-watching Spider-Man 1 a few days ago, because I've seen that movie so few times, and it made so little of an impact on me, that I didn't even really think that the Daredevil scene... Daredevil, I've seen quite a few more times, and I've always liked seeing that scene. You know, I admit now, it is a ripoff. You know, I, I can see how that is. You know, and, and besides, this movie came out like one year after Spider-Man, so it's pretty obvious. You know, they got it from there. I really like seeing you know, Bullseye that one last time. I like how in the director's cut they actually edited into the ending, you know, instead of it. It was originally in the theatrical cut, it's like a post credit scene, you know, him in the, in the hospital. But, but yeah, you know, the, the, there's a fly annoying him. And if, you know, if we know one thing about Dare, about Bullseye, about his sort of personality, it's that he's not gonna stand for something bothering him. And how is he going to deal with it? Well, you know, and he grabs the syringe and... <laughs> bullseye! You know, it's... Yeah. I, I love his little facial tics. I mean, the guy looks like he's going to explode. You know, on the plane, when that woman is talking, and he's just trying to listen to the loud rock music, you know, and she's just going on and on. She's being racist, ignorant. You know, she's just yammering on and just horrible. And, and he's just like, I'm not going to stand with it. And he looks at, at her shadow and sort of, you know, I don't know, triangulates. I don't know what the term is here. He figures out and he just, with the peanut and she just, it, and it hits and, and just chokes her and she, you know, collapses. And it looks like she's asleep. So the, you know, the, the what's it called? The stewardess. You know, I was like, oh, she's sleeping. Is there anything I can get you, sir? More peanuts, please. Perfect. You know, just, I, I love it. I love when he stares down an airport security dog. That right there pretty much just, you know, that, that is the badass attitude. That is, if, if you had to sum up the character and the bad attitude of Bullseye in this movie, then it would just be editing out that little part of the movie, and yeah, there, there, there you go. That's it. That that perfectly encompasses it. Those few seconds, you know. 
I'd say the director's cut does a really good job of turning the, the focus back on the, you know, his, his part of the city, his, his neighborhood, Hell's Kitchen, you know, Daredevil fights for Hell's Kitchen. It's, he's going to protect the people there, and, you know, he, he knows how bad it is. He grew up there, he knows how bad it's going to be for people, and so he stays there and defends the people there. Partly as a lawyer and partly as their devil, you know, where as, I believe it's also Mark Stephen Johnson on the commentary track talking about how the theatrical cut was kind of just, he's avenging his girl, you know, and yeah, kind of, and that just, that isn't Daredevil, that isn't properly, whereas, you know, defending his neighborhood, that feels like Daredevil. I also just think this movie does a better job of actually making you believe that this guy would don a suit, well, maybe not quite a suit, but he would actually go ahead and fight for people. You know, I just never bought that in, I'm not Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man is a different story, but yeah, I just, and, and the suit, I mean, it's pretty obvious he he uses his father's image, you know, it's, it's sort of in his father's honor, because his father, you know, there, there was that thing of, you know, we're not gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna fight, we're gonna keep on, and, yeah, so he uses a, a suit that sort of uses that, and, you know, the, the devil, and I guess the dare part comes from being dared to fight by the bully, <laughs> Yeah, that, that part was a little bit of a little bit of a stretch, but you know, overall and, and I can see what he's kind of, you know, like I said in the review, he's doing the Batman thing. He is using the shadows to kind of you know, put terror into the hearts of criminals and thus a suit is probably a good idea. You know, something where it's like people see him and they're like, ah, Daredevil, you know, that's that's him, you know. As I said in the review, I, I just love the lawyery stuff, the, the joking between the two lawyers, you know, Matt and, and Foggy. The, you know, the, so, so you, aha, so you concede that there are alligators in this. No, 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 not concede. No, how, how can you not concede? You just, you know, just that whole thing just really worked, you know, that it's just, and, and it's like, an even match, you know, it's it's like it's like sparring or something, you know, and and the 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 honey mix up is pretty funny. I gotta say, just the you know, Matt is just flipping out on Foggy, just like you know what, no, just what do you want? What do you want out of our clients? They're 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 good people. They're innocent. What do you want? What's a better client? Define better, you know, and and Foggy's like. Okay, if it's gonna be that way, you know, and then he gives him the, the the mustard instead of the honey, and he's yeah, and then they start talking about the vacuum stuff. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know if that's true, but it makes a lot of sense that you know lawyers would have like a, a moral vacuum, you know. I also quite like the 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 bit about how the the other lawyer is Jewish. You know, it's it's not even they don't make a big deal out of it. It's just the name, Hirsch. He's Jewish. And he's a lawyer. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, the, but, but yeah, the, you know, the, and, and Matt puts the, the mustard into his you know, coffee, and then Electra walks in, looking amazing, and, you know, Foggy is just staring at her, lying about how good she looks, you know, and, Matt needs an excuse. So, well, I did already put honey in my coffee. Well, you know what, I could switch. And then, you know, you dig a grave for someone else, you might fall into it yourself. And suddenly Foggy is your drink. And just the, you know, the, the, the line that he drinks and then, and just, friend of yours? You know, I've never seen it before. It's just, yeah. And the, yeah, the the sort of awkwardness of the of of the first meeting. You know, 
I, I'm looking for some honey. Could you help me out? Right in front of you. Could you be a little more specific? What are you? Blind? Yeah. I am so sorry. You know, here you go. And, and suddenly she, you know, in an instant she goes from Sid to Jen. You know, that was pretty funny. The you know the fight between them, I agree with you know Mark Stephen Johnson on the it's it's kind of the it's basically flirting you know they're they're courting each other with this you know it, it's it's very kind of sexual foreplay ish you know the, the whole fight and I can kind of see complaints about you know how oh she apparently isn't bothered by fighting a blind man and he's not bothered by you know blowing his cover because all these kids see that you know he's you know clearly not blind yeah I guess it I, I can't really argue with that I just I still just really like the scene and I really like how the you know they, they have that moment very near the end of well, basically the end of the fight, you know, with he, like, grabs her from behind or something like that, and, like, stop hitting me, and she, you know, jabs him with the heel instead. Ah, oh, you can't see that, because you can't see my feet, you know, this is the foot, and then, you know, just that, you know. And then, when they fight on the rooftop, and she doesn't know that that's him, he grabs her, and, you know, it's like, I don't, I'm not gonna fight you, and then... You know, again, she gets rid of him. You know, that whole thing is just... You know, and, and it's a completely different tone, suddenly. And and then she realizes that he, you know, that Daredevil is Matt Murdock, and, you know, she understands. I really, really like the last couple of fights with, you know... Daredevil on Bullseye with in, in the church. I, I really love it. Again, we see how much of just a complete psychopath Bullseye is with the you know with, with the priest. Priest being clearly no threat to Bullseye. And you know the the thing you know attaches to the wall near the priest and he's just like first one's a warning. Padre, he's gonna kill the priest if the priest doesn't move away from Daredevil. You know, that's just insane. You know, I, yeah. And, you know, the whole fight with uh, up on the, the pipe organs. I love when Bullseye, like, knocks Daredevil down. And Daredevil's, like, hanging from one of the organs. And, and Bullseye's just like, eh, eh, eh. You're down there, I'm up here. <laughs> and Daredevil just fires the thing and grabs it and it like grabs the bullseye around the neck and he's just like hanging from there and then they you know try choking each other and all this stuff. It's just really, really good. And man that fight between Kingpin and Daredevil is just brutal and really, really cool. And the ending with Kingpin's knees, ouch! That is just, and, and I really like how that's kind of, I mean, he needs him to, you know, stop. He needs him to not be able to fight back. And that kind of is just, yeah, you know, that'll do it. You know, and, and how he, you know, he doesn't kill him. Because I'm not the bad guy. And yeah, I can kind of see how, you know, sort of set up that, you know, Kingpin is supposed to return in the sequel that will almost definitely never happen. I wouldn't mind a reboot. I'd especially support them in recasting Daredevil. And, you know, they could recast Elektra as well. I mean, now we at least have seen Garner as Elektra, you know. The... Oh, and by the way, I, I just gotta add, obviously, the, you know, when he's about to kill Kingpin, you know, he's like, you know, they, I've been thinking about this day since I was 12 years old. Okay, so it wasn't the only thing I've been thinking about when I was 12 years old, but still, you know, it's just, you know, I had 
to say that. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I quite like the narration. I again think that that's... I don't remember if there wasn't any in the theatrical cut or if there just wasn't much, but it just really adds to it. And, you know, seeing the... seeing both Kingpin and Wesley Owen Welsh in prison, you know, right next to each other, and that thing about, you know, violence doesn't discriminate, it hits all of us. And, you know, evil survives. And then you see the fly still alive there, you know, and the whole thing. Come to think of it, he doesn't really have that effective of a... I mean, considering that the first time we see him apprehending a bad guy, he kills him. Although I guess it maybe wasn't entirely... He doesn't as much kill him as not save him, I guess, but still, considering that, he doesn't kill either of the bad guys in the movie, so yeah, he doesn't have that strong of a ratio, and, and in fact, Kingpin says he'll be out, excuse me, and Bullseye, excuse me, I mean, he's bound to a hospital bed, but he can still use his you know, power, so, yeah. I do really like the exchange about Kingpin, you know, oh, don't worry about that, because I'll, cause I'll get out, I know, and I'll be waiting, you know, it's excellent. And the thing about, you know, oh yeah, sure, you know my identity. Tell the boys at Rikers how you got beat by a blind man. It'll be like blood in the water. I really like the mystery of you know, the, the Lisa Tazio murder and you know, the Foggy's line about, you know, get, getting into the house. You know, the, I mean, do, do you have a pen? Oh, yeah, sure. That was my pen. And, and then he, you know, gets in. I must have been asleep that day, that, the, the day that they taught that at the, you know, the, a law school. What was that? Real estate law? <laughs> that's a good line. That's, that's a very funny line. And I like the, the thing about, you know, M-O-M-6-0, 608, you know. That's it. Her mom did it. Now, can we go home, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, Karen provides the you know, the clue of saying, you know, maybe you got it back, back, back side, backwards. And, yeah, you know, you have that thing, you know, wow, 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 Wesley Owen Welsh, you know. I like the, the thing with the, you know, the pacemaker preventing him from, you know, making it impossible to tell if he's lying because his heart rate, the heart rate doesn't change. You know, I, I can maybe kind of understand people complaining that, you know, he's not in costume and this is clearly Matt Murdock, you know, questioning this guy, but I don't know. I'm not sure I really have a counter argument, you know, I am fully admitting that that, you know, is kind of risky for him to be doing. I am a little torn on Coolio's performance as, you know, was it Dante ja Jackson in the film, you know, the, the man framed for the murder. Some of the stuff I think is hilarious. I love the handgun exchange, you know, with the dude. In fact, you don't even own a handgun. No, sir. Have you ever owned a handgun? No, sir. Do you have any intention of ever owning a handgun? No, sir! That's... Uh, thank you, no further questions. Can't hit nothing with a handgun. No further questions, and they sort of talking about a shotgun, and just, wow. You know, enough rope to hang himself with. You know, I think the hugging at the end of the movie is a little bit too bad. One or two hugs, too many, you know. But on the whole, I like when, you know, you know, we'll, we'll represent you. That is, if you're innocent. Are you innocent? Yeah! And, you know, Murdoch listens to the heartbeat, and he's like, I believe you. And then, F Foggy, you do. And Dante, you do. You know, that's, that's really good. You know, even he knows, you know, what creek he's up in. I, yeah, what creek he is up. Yeah, I, I'm not completely...
comfortable with that term, evidently. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.